All right, guys, so now I gotta get down to the part that it's kind of like going to school. Basically, when you're bending up a roll cage or anything that has to do with tubing, you wanna do it right the first time and make sure you have the minimal amount of waste as possible. So what we're gonna start out with is a simple formula. First and foremost, you need to know how to come up with how much material you use in the bend. To come up with that, the first thing you need to know is the center line radius of the die. The die that we're using today is an inch die and it has a four inch center line radius. The next thing you need to know is what degree are you gonna bend? For our example, we're gonna bend 90 degrees. So we got 90 degrees. And then you're gonna multiply those two numbers by .0175. That's gonna give you the amount of material that's used in that bend. So in our example, we're just gonna have two bends and they're gonna be on a 20 inch high and 20 inch wide area. First thing we're gonna come up with is our 90 degree bend on each corner. And we wanna know how much material is in the center and how much is on the legs. So to get there, we multiply four inches, which is our center line radius again of the die, 90 degrees, which is the amount of bending that we're doing, and 0.0175, which is the last part of our formula. And it gives us 6.3 inches is what we're coming up with. So now what we're gonna do is we know that our center line radius between this leg and this leg, we'll call it leg one and leg two, is 20 inches. So we're gonna take 6.3 and subtract it from 20 twice, and it's gonna give us our center leg, which is 7.4 inches. So from here, you take each part, the bend, the bend, and here, and that's gonna give you your 20 inches on center line. And then continue on with your formula that you got here. And then you're gonna subtract 6.3 from 20 to get you 13.7 for leg one and leg two. So basically, your rundown is gonna be 13.7 inches in is gonna be your first bend and you're gonna take up 6.3 inches. Your next bend is gonna be 7.4 inches from the end of tangent to the beginning of the next tangent and it's gonna be 6.3 inches around the corner and then you should end up with a 13.7 leg. Pretty simple equation that can be used across the board on whatever you're trying to bend within a certain size parameter. So from here, we're gonna work over to the Camaro and the core support and it's a little bit more in depth and I'm gonna walk you through how to make the three pieces that we need for the front. All right, so on the core support for the Camaro, we have three bars. Two of them are mirrored to each other and the one of them's a, basically a main hoop that's gonna run through the front bumper. This bar here, we're gonna call it bar three and we have bar one and two. Bar one and two are pretty, pretty basic. They just have two bends in them in an S shape and they come forward on the front of the frame and they're gonna connect to this five bend hoop that's gonna run through the front. We're gonna bend the whole thing out of one inch. It's gonna be pretty straightforward and simple. To get us to where we need to be and to know how to set it up, we're gonna start with how to come up with each one of our bends. Now, there's so many different ways to do this. I use uh, a CAD program to develop this, you know, the drawings and such for uh, myself, but there's a bunch of different ways you can do it. Really, the math is kind of on you to figure out. Um, it doesn't have to be near as intricate as I'm gonna be doing here today. But that's kind of where you'll learn as you go when it comes to using the bender. But for today, what I'm gonna show you is how to do this based off of what I have for information. All right, so our first stop is stop one. It's six and seven eighths of an inch, and we're gonna do a 55 degree bend. What we have to come up with in here is all of our bend measurements that we're gonna use between the bends. So we know that we're gonna go six and seven eighths of an inch in, but we need to calculate what 55 inches is gonna be, which is where our formula that I introduced earlier is gonna come into play. So walking you down through our bend stops, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out what your material used is for each bend as you go through, and then add it up to what your leg lengths are between. So you have leg one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So as you come down through and you do your measurements and you add everything up, you'll get what your stops are. So basically what you're gonna do is when you have your tubing laid out before you put it into the bender, you're gonna mark each one of these stops down through, okay? And giving yourself some sort of reference, you don't have to use obviously a big dry erase board like this. You can just have a piece of paper that says, hey, stop one is 30 degrees, stop three is 10. Um, and as you run down through the bender, you'll be able to keep yourself together and you won't get lost. But basically as you come down through and you add up all your stops, you'll end up with a very end measurement of our overall length, that's what OAL is, of 81 and a half. 
Um, the actual measurement that I have, because everything that I work in is in decimal, is 81.45. But when we're looking at something like this where it's hand fabricated, it's not nearly as important to get down to the, you know, the decimal like that. We can work in fractions and just be just as accurate as we need to be. Our second piece that we want to talk about is our two legs here. These have an overall length of 22 and 7 eighths is what I calculated from stop one and stop two. Basically, we're looking at a 16 and a half inch leg here, and then there's a 2.875 leg in the center. And basically where we have our bend at the very end of tangent, which tangent is from here to here, at the end of tangent is where it's gonna weld onto the front of the frame of the Camaro now. In this situation, what you need to know is when you bend in the bender, this is where your tangent is when you started. But you need to have all this leg at the beginning to be able to make that bend. If you just go and try to bend at tangent, you don't have anything to hold on to. So you need to have a leg at the beginning of your tube to hold on to. So what we actually have to calculate into this is we know our tube is going to be 22 and 7 eighths long, but we need to have some extra there just to give us something to hold on to. So that's where we're going to do 26 and a half. And then once we have this tube bent for both sides, we're going to cut that leg off that we use just for bending. Sometimes you do have to have some waste, and in this situation you're going to have to just because we're basically putting that tangent bend right onto the frame. All right, so that's wrapping it up for it. Hopefully this gives you all the information that you need to move forward. Uh, like I said, there's tons of different ways to do this, but this is a very easy, generalized way to get you the measurements that you need for basically anything that you want to bend with the Eastwood bender. Um, so moving forward, we're going to cut our tubing, we're going to get it ready for the bender, and we're going to start bending it up and fit it onto the frame. All right, so this is where we have to introduce the reset. You have to take the tension off the die, pull the pin, bring the ram back. And reset on pin two. And then we'll go back forward. That's 55, we're gonna go to 57 and then bring it back. So there's our first bend. So I'm gonna show you guys here right now. We're gonna zero this out and then put it on here and see that I'm off five degrees. All right, so we bent up leg one and leg two. Uh, for this exercise, what I wanted to show here is how to tell where the tangent of the bend is. Uh, if you look at the inside of the bend on our second bend, there's actually a little mark um, from the die itself. That would be where your tangent is. So as I explained earlier, we're gonna actually have to cut this leg off, and that would be where we're gonna be cutting because that's where the bend actually stops. So it's basically right here. Um, in this exercise, I actually made uh, multiple marks. So you can see the beginning and the end of the bend as well, which is referenced here with the yellow.
All right, guys, as you can see, we finished up the rad core support here on the Camaro. Hopefully you're able to learn something in this video and able to apply it to one of your future projects. For more information on the Eastwood hydraulic tubing bender or any of their other products, check out eastwood.com.